Welcome. Hello, everybody. Of. How you doing? You good? I'm great. Sorry, I was like, I'm are you good. talking to them? Are you talking to I'm me? I'm talking to, to you. What are you doing? And these guys. Hope you're doing well. Sing off in comments or whatever you're supposed to do. Yeah. Anyway, let's enjoy another great episode. Why don't I, we hope, I hope by episode five you've given us a brisk five stars with a great review. Brisk five stars. And followed Seven and brisk. everything like that because... If you think we deserve it. <laughs> yeah. If you think we deserve it, give us a five star. <laughs> anyway, but this is episode number five, So, yeah. which we're having a little trouble with the intro music. Apparently, that's copyright. So, Oh, yeah. Anyway, had to change that. So, there was no intro music in the last episode we'll for some out. listeners. I think YouTube kept it. Really? Spotify. No, YouTube didn't get it. Spotify got it. I okay. I was all over the shop. That's all right. We'll figure it out. Like who, if any of my friends, or we can make a little yeah. jingle for our intro music. Or if you have music that you want to be played on our show. As our intro music. As our intro music. Give us the rights to it. That'll be so much fun. We will we'll have it on. That would be really cool. Yeah. We could like review the song or something. That'd be cool. That would be sick. Anyway. Uh, so, today's good versus bad. Good versus bad. Straight into it. Start her off. I only have a good. I have two goods. You have two and goods. A good, and a good and a good. A good and a good. A good, the good, and the ugly. A good and a good. We all know good. that movie. A good and a good and a good. Good and a good and a good. That could What's be a like good? a run. Yeah, what is a good? Um, I am currently 65% of the way through of reading The Trial of the Sun Queen, and it is pretty good. I explained this to Jay earlier today with my book. It's pretty much like Fantasy The Bachelor. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it quite a lot. And why is that? Why is it The Bachelor? Just the premise of the book. Like, I don't want to spoil anything just in case someone's listening that hasn't read it but wants to read it. But, like, basically the female main character finds herself in a position where, like, this fantasy kind of court hold trials where, like, ten girls – get to compete and win these trials and everything f- with the king to become the next queen. Right. But the part that makes it like The Bachelor is that the king can spend time with these girls and, like, request them to come for dinner and and will, like, pretty much date all of these girls at the same time mm. while they're also competing in deadly trials to become queen. Because and they also get powers when they're queen. And so he's trying to... Figure out who he likes. Who he likes to be the queen. Yeah, but like ultimately it's not fully his choice because they they have to get through the trials, one. Yeah. And then they also have to like stand in front of this all-knowing mirror who will discuss, like will choose the queen. Right. So like apparently it takes it into consideration. Hmm. But like... You know, yeah. But I'm just so, enjoying the like bachelorness of him going on dates and like having favorites plural and <laughs> yeah, like that. Because like yeah, one of the lines that I read today was, um, she was like, he'd said to the, that she was one of his favorites, and she goes, "I'm not sure whether I should be happy that I'm in the favorites or the fact that the favorites is plural." Ooh. And I was like, "Ooh, drama." Mm, I would hate that. It really is. Like so if someone kissed me and I know they're just going to go to another room and kiss someone else, I'd be like, <laughs> no. Yeah. What was th- so, I think something just fell down in their kitchen. You wouldn't have heard that. You wouldn't have heard that, but we just heard a magnet fall Just to bring you into the room. It sounded like <laughs> clack, clack, clack. Clack, clack, clack. The ghosts are here. Um, and my other good was we printed off some wedding photos yeah, finally. We did. They're right here. Again, they're you can't screen, see them. You can't see them. And they're if in the rest of the podcast studio. When Which is a studio. It's not our lounge room. Yeah. That'd be so funny just to be like, oh, behind here there's, there's 60 crew members. <laughs> <laughs> it is a two-man crew. Yep. Um, but, yeah, so we printed off some beautiful wedding photos and I've decided that I'm just going to make like an album for the rest of our photos to go in and make Which a cute little good. album. 
Yeah, because that's what we did for our guest book, remember? Yeah, she Our guest cool. book, I made photos for over the 10 years that we've been together. And in that, um, anyone could sign their name and write messages to us. I made sure there was plenty of white space. And it actually worked out really well. I love it. Yeah. 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 It, it's going to be cool. But yeah, those came out really nice. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I feel like it rude to be staring at the photos and being like, they look so nice when you guys can't see them. Yeah, no, you can't see them. And even we if might, you're an audio we, listener, you, we can't really dis- – I mean, we can describe them to you. They're very pretty. They're very pretty. One's have, black and white. Two are color. There's three. There you go. Thank you very much. If for, we want to, we can take <laughs> – we'll take a photo. We can take a photo of them and upload them somewhere so you can see what we're talking about. Yeah, maybe there's – who knows? I we probably should make like an Instagram account or like some sort of social media <laughs> for this podcast. All right, one if day in the future, if there is an Instagram account <laughs> if it exists. of ours, it will be in the description and you will be able to find it. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, d- yeah. <laughs> Who knows? But it ain't going to be when this is up. So No. But anyway. Um, what's your good versus bad? My good versus bad. So, again, yeah, I don't know. Bads are hard to come up with. Whether we're just yeah. too Just little things maybe like little inconveniences I mean, that just like, like kind of irked you a little bit. Oh, I have a bad. You sp- we were washing my you were washing your car today and you got me wet on the inside yeah. of the car when you were spraying the water. Yeah, the Jeep's not too waterproof because is it? it's a soft top, so it just had it. I was it just wet. went straight through the door sill. <laughs> Bless your heart and soul. We're gonna keep that in. That's funny. Goodness. Anyway, <laughs> what's your good versus bad? My I don't again. Yeah, I don't have a bad. Uh, maybe the TT ended. I mean, I have been following that closer than ever this year. And at the start of it all kicking off, like I watched the race that goes before it. We talked about a, a little bit about this on the last episode, but TT is like a crazy race if you don't know what it is. Yeah. Isle of Man, nuts, motorbike race. Anyway, so I watched the race that comes up before that, which is called the Northwest 200. And seen one of the guys, he actually had a bad stack in it. Ooh. Um, but I was like, I want to go for that guy because he crashed. Right, which is redemption. Pretty funny. Anyway, redemption. Yeah, I don't know. He just looked quick, and I know he's been getting there the last couple of years. Yeah, and I was like, "Yep, Davy Todd, he's the man." He kicked it out with two wins. Super he sounds stock. like a pirate. He does sound like a pirate. I Very love quiet it. That pirate. I would, I would vouch for him. No, no, no. Just his name sounds like a pirate. Oh, Davy Todd. Davy Todd. Davy Todd's locker. Oh, the curse Arr. of Davy Todd <laughs> the, is what my brain <laughs> goes to. I said this to you earlier today when we were watching it yeah. because. Like, you know, me knowing nothing about TT and Isle of Man mm. and you asking me who to go for over the last, like today after the last two weeks of watching you talking about it. Thank you. I was straight away, I was like, David Todd. David Todd. David Todd's locker. Yeah. yeah. And the other writer, Jackson Sparrow. <laughs> that would be really fun. Um, no, but yeah, he ended up winning like two races and I'm stoked for him. What I found really interesting was in that last race, what was that called? The Super Stock? Is that what the it was? The Seniors. The senior, senior TT. Sorry, the Senior TT. Yeah. Um, two of the big contenders didn't finish like, the didn't race. didn't finish it. So, spoilers. Yeah, sorry. Spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> um, but also, if this is like, it's already been. It's so, got to be. So, yeah. you kind of lost out. Um, but the f- thing that I found funny was one of them pulled off because of a failure or something mm. so wasn't injured didn't crash or anything like that which is good but yep. they stopped right out the front of the pub and they actually oh. went into the pub no that was the one that crashed oh was that the one that crashed that was the one okay. that crashed so um one of them crashed and the commentators were like oh he's crashed right out front of the pub and then he's gone inside <laughs> yeah. and then they were like oh i don't think he'd be able to buy a beer he wouldn't have a card on him and then they were like mm, i don't think he'll need Did a I show card you his crash no, but well, you can show me later because it's okay. not like they can watch. Yeah, you guys. Can yeah, watch but it. you should look at it. We can we can yeah. put it the link to the crash in the. But he got he he crashes like straight into the wall and then like gets up, starts walking away, and then I guess went to the pub and sent everyone a photo or like someone sent a photo to the commentators of him in the pub. Yeah, I never seen it, but they they I they mentioned so it. They were like, oh, we just got a photo that. That he's in the pub, so yeah. he's all right. <laughs> yeah, I think that is so funny. And it's yeah. just so Isle of Man. Like, yeah, it is. You know, because yeah. it's like you drive, you ride past the bakery and the pub oh, and all literally. of these places that like you were telling me about how if you time it wrong as a pedestrian going into like the bakery to pick up some bread and you <laughs> and, then they, and then they they 
they keep you in there because they're about to have all these bikes. That was my that was my hypothesis. Yes, that could happen to someone. I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has. Like someone's like, oh, I've got. I'll put this on and then I'll quickly just duck and go get some rolls for the rest of the for uh, the rest of the lunch or something, and then get stuck there for and get stuck there for an hour waiting for this race to go past while their food is because you can't walk on the going cold at home because they thought it was going to be a two minute trip to the bakery. I'll quickly get the rolls before the TT starts so I can make lunch for the lads. Yep. And then you get stuck in the bakery because the TT started. (laughs) That would be so good. I feel like that would be so (laughs) funny. What a story that would be to like tell. Like you would have never have guessed what just happened. Mm. (laughs) But it's funny. Like it's there's heaps of stories historically with that. Right. I know we don't want to make two episodes talking about it, but I'll I'll add this in quick. Yeah. Um. There's been yeah historically there's been like crashes and stuff that people have crashed straight into the pub. Like into the pub or wow. into the bakery. <laughs> yeah, just nuts. But uh, You reckon that's in, in their insurance? Oh, it's got to be something because like, it's held by the island itself. Yeah, like it surely would so, be in their insurance. Like they'd be able to claim TT, TT accident. TT accident proof. <laughs> yeah, like they would be able to claim that yeah. on their insurance. Which is so funny because I think one of the major sponsors for their thing this year was an insurance company. Like oh one God, of so Harley Man's biggest <laughs> insurance companies. Stop it. So, yeah, probably. I hope so. Um, wow. So, you're going to tell me. That was my good. I love that. Do you have a bad? Uh, my bad, yes. My bad oh. is actually another topic that we're going to talk about. <laughs> was I went back to watch. Oh, yes. Okay. A movie and it sucked. But it was good. I remember it being good. <laughs> so, this is going to be like the main topic of today's yeah, podcast we're talk is. About this. is Childhood movies that were so good when you were a kid and then when you rewatch them, they're Just either shit. absolutely terrible or they still hold up. Yeah. Like there's a few that I've, there's definitely I've a lot gotten more. a couple. It like was kind of hard. It was kind of hard to find bad ones. So. Yeah. So there's a few that are bad and then others that like you have a newfound appreciation watching them as an adult of all this stuff that you did not remember happening mm. when you were a kid because it all just went over your head. Mm. Yeah. Like those true yeah. family movies. Yeah, like family films. Like, like it's not Home Alone in that. No, 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 no. I mean like family films where they've got the perfect balance of kid jokes, kid humor, adult jokes that go straight over the kid's uh, head yep. so the f- whole family can enjoy the film is what a like a family movie is. Yeah. You know, like it Pacifier? hundred percent. Nice. You know about me and that movie? Is that why you mentioned it? Yeah, kind of. When I was a kid. Me and my sister had bunk beds and I was on the top bunk and I had a little Barbie TV mm. hooked up in my bed on like my shelf. Yeah. And every single night to go to sleep, I would watch the pacifier. With the turtle and the panda and the roll over yeah, something. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think my sister literally hated me. Sorry. <laughs> um, but <laughs> she, she hated you watching that. Yes. Well, no, she hated me for a lot of things at that age. Yeah, I right. was a very annoying five years That's younger. That's just love. Yeah. Like, I was five years younger and we had to share a room. Like, I was like four or five. Yeah. And my sister, who was like nine or ten, sharing a room. Yeah. No wonder she moved out into like the back study area as no, a bedroom exactly. just to have a space. Like, I would have too if I was <laughs> in her position. But. That's funny. The Pacifier, a great movie. Pacifier was... Good. Still holds up. Yeah. I'll say that still holds up. Yeah. Family. But yeah, before, <laughs> before we get into like the bulk of the topic for the day though, um, you wanted to tell me about like a game show contestant oh, thing. Can you tell me the story? There was that as well. All right. Before we get into the movies and my bad experience, um, <laughs> game show hosts. So, not hosts. Game show cheaters. Contestants. And yeah. contestants. That like hacked the game. So, yeah, we've all wanted to be like, We've all wanted to jump on a game show and like win it, right? Can I just guess? Is this game show The Price Is Right? No. Have you heard about that? That's price another is right good guys? one. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that next episode. <laughs> we'll talk about The Price Is Right cheater next episode. Wasn't even a cheater. It was a good one. That's a good one as well. Yeah. This is very similar. Okay. Very similar. Um. So this guy's name is Michael Larson. Michael Larson. I want to say it's Michael. Larson. Yeah. Yeah, Michael Larson. All right. In 1984, he jumped on a game show called Press Your Luck. Or press for luck, something like that. Okay. Anyway, there's like, imagine like a giant TV and there's the go-go stop. (laughs) (laughs) Another great show. Another great show that still holds up later. Um, (laughs) And there's like these, I want to say like eight boards that go around in a square. Yeah. 
and there's lights that flash on top of each TV in this box in an odd sequence. And the idea is you've got to press the button to stop the light. It stops it, and whatever board it lands on, you get that amount of money. Oh, cool, yeah. And you keep going, you keep going, but if you accidentally press it on one of the boards and it flips over and it's a whammy, it means you lose. You lose all of the money you've earned and you're kind of kicked off the game show. Essentially, that's like the basic premise. Okay. It got cancelled in like 1992. Yeah, so. right. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't that good? Yeah. yeah. Uh, or 1986, I think. Okay. Something like that. Anyway, this guy recorded every single episode on his VHS. Right. And spent nights like watching it, watching the game. Each contestant would go. He'd work out what the boards are. He'd work out the sequence. There's, he worked out there was like four different sequences of the way the lights goes. Oh, my God. So he just learned this game. And so he would sit there. And then, like, play it and pause on his TV remote, like, when he thinks you should go. And then he would check the next one and be like, oh, that's, this is how much I would have won, or sort of, sort of thing. Wow. Um, so he plays it at home or whatever in his VHS. And then he gets a spot on the show. He gets a spot on the show. They set him up. Now, it's 1984. Like, it's, this is, so when we talk the money, it's 1984, so it's. Inflation. A lot more now. Inflation. Yeah. So he goes on there and he starts playing, starts pressing for luck. From the get-go, he's like, on it. boom, on it. And he never gets a whammy for like 100 and something shots. He ends up making $115,000. His like score racks up to $115,000. Oh and the producers are going like, what the hell? Like, do, oh, this is crazy. Yeah, the host is trying to like play it off as like, oh my yeah. God. Because he'd worked out they just always used the same four sequences and he worked out that in two corners there was never going to be a whammy. So he would always land it in those corners. Oh, my goodness. And when I tell you like this guy was on like on fleek for this game, like he was into it. He was like screaming every time he presses the button. He's like head up in the sky and he's just like, stop. It's hilarious. It's so funny. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. well, that's what he was saying. <laughs> so good. He was like, stop it. <laughs> Making sure like they didn't like Make sure it his... doesn't keep going. Yeah. Yeah, so like didn't delay it to try and make him get a whammy. Yeah. Is that what he was trying to do? Exactly, exactly. Oh, my goodness. So super funny. And they, they were like, they didn't want to give him the money or whatever. But at the end of the day, like he taught, oh, he, I don't know if he told them in the end, but. It's like, oh, he'd learnt how the game was played. So then they changed out how the board works and all this. Yeah. So he walked away with, yeah, like 115,000. Oh, my goodness. Whatever. Which was super cool. So he hacked the game show. Side quest of this guy. At the end of that year, he heard a radio show was doing a $1 bill um, note like challenge. So they were giving away 30 grand. If you had the one dollar note with a certain digit on it, a really big like American right, yeah, yeah station, yeah. so he got out fifty thousand dollars <laughs> of of um one dollar bills. bills, and he's searching through them all, searches through fifty thousand one dollar notes. Oh my goodness! And he didn't have the bill, so he goes to a Christmas party. He's like, "I'll put this at home." Goes to a Christmas party. Burglars come through, ransack his house, and steal the fifty thousand no dollars. <laughs> yeah, which you feel kind of bad for him, like he wasted his earnings like that. But then it turns out he like scammed a bunch of people for millions and millions of dollars, like later on in his life. Oh my goodness! But then he died of throat cancer, so it makes you feel bad for him again. <laughs> <laughs> this is Michael Larson guy. Was, this guy is just like a flip flop. Yeah. Like, oh my yeah. goodness! Um, that story there just reminded me of yeah. a video that I watched where you know um, the chase, like the. Ch- the oh, the game question answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's like question answer, and you beat like the the like mastermind high IQ person. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a prank show that did they put someone on the pr- on the chase with an earpiece in and fed them which one it was going to be before it went like the question. So they were like, "Oh, press B," or "Oh, just wait until the very, very last second and then press C." And like we're pretty on much the playing, they were playing the the um, host, 
like the prank was on the host. Oh, okay. So the prank was on the host. So the contestant was fake, had an earpiece in, was getting all the information. The person, the high IQ person at the top that he was versing, also aware, had an earpiece okay. in. But the host and his reactions to this person winning and like, like, because they'd make it out and be like, it was a complete guess. They'd be like, oh, I don't know which one to choose. And it'd be like the last few seconds. And this was like the final one to win, the final one to win. And he's sitting there going, choose one, choose one. Like he's freaking out. Choose one, choose one, choose one. (laughs) And then they'd click it. And then they'd be like, oh my God. Because also, because the chaser was in on it. Yep. Normally what they how it works is like the middle one the middle amount of money in the board is what they earned by answering questions. Yeah. And then the chaser like low bowls them an offer so they can make one place safer um and only has to answer like three questions correct to not be chased or they can highball them an offer to lose a spot and have to answer more questions to be safe and it's riskier. Okay, yeah. And because the producers and the chaser and the contestant were all in on it, the chaser highballed so high an amount that had never been done before that the oh. host was questioning what was going on when the chaser said it. Like, he literally, like, you can see it's him. like, are you sure you can do that? You can see him look over to the producers to be like, is that number right? Like, are were you allowed to do that much? Yeah. How much, do you know how much it was? I can't remember off the top of my head. It was a prank anyway, wanna be, but, but like- it was huge amount like it was like over 50k more than what like the middle like, is this you and is this the uk it's chase the UK one. so it's pounds so with like fifty thousand pounds with that guy um and i i beg you to look up that video of like the uk chase prank on the host and watch it because his face his reactions are like genuine and like awesome in a normal episode, but then like putting him into this situation is so cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm obsessed. It every time I cut, like I scroll past it, I stop and watch. It's one of those videos that it just brings me so much joy to mm. watch his reactions. It sounds like it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that just made me think of that with the That's game funny show contestants. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we could talk forever about game shows. Yeah, we definitely got so cool. We've definitely got to do the. Um, the price is right one next time. I'll learn a bit more about that. But yeah. I had to talk about that Michael Larson one. It was super, like, I just found it so funny. And then as I was reading through it, I was like, no, nah, I've got to mention those side quests because you, you feel bad for him. And then you're like, oh, wait, he scammed like 144,000 people. And then you feel bad for him. And then you feel again. bad for him because he got <laughs> through again. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly. But yeah. All right. So for the main. Main, main event. event. The main event. Talking bam. about the main event. Bam, bam, bam. I was going to do the actual thing, but I didn't want to be copyrighted of the... Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it perfectly like yeah, in pitch <laughs> and it would have probably be like flagged. Yeah, probably. Yeah. We're going to get more copyrights because she's singing <laughs> Sorry. theme songs. Um. So... Well, can I talk about mine? Because mine is the main event. Okay. So I have... What? It's my bad experience. It's the it's about the main event. Okay, so I have a couple, but you do your one first. Do you only have one? I meant the main event because it's boxing. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even think you know Go the movie it. I'm Go talking about. It. I told you about it though. I don't think I've watched this movie that you're t- telling me about. All right, my bad. Going back to the very beginning of the episode, my bad for the good bad was Real Steel. Yeah, I've never watched that. The movie Real Steel with Hunk Jackman in it. I didn't know Hugh Jackman was in a Hunk Jackman was in a boxing with a, movie. Yeah, yeah. Really? It ain't. It's yeah, a boxing movie, like but pre Wolverine. It's robot boxers. They're robots. Is it like pre Wolverine? Uh, when was Wolverine? Do you mean like the old school Wolverine? Oh no, no, this is like 2011. Oh, so this is like yeah, yeah. in the middle of him being yeah, Wolverine. like I was like probably start of high school, or whatever. Gotcha. Um, yeah, this was. And I remember seeing it at the movies going, that was sick. Like going home, probably punching the shit out of my brother. <laughs> or something. I, don't know. I don't know. Just what you do. Um, but this real steel movie, robots box and Hugh Jackman is like, he was a boxer. Yeah. And then now he fights the robots. Anyway. Oh, so, so after fought, like okay. losing a bunch of, losing a bunch of fights, underground fights, he's like, living out of a dump truck basically because right. he he has all these money that he's borrowed and people want to come after him and bash him. Yeah. I worked out the character, his character, which I think his name is like Charlie Kenton or something, 
is the worst movie character of all time. That's a he big claim. He sucks. That is a big claim. His character sucks. <laughs> In what way? Like, well, not, you, you can't cheer for him or it's just not underdeveloped nah, or what? You, one, you can't cheer for him. And then after, after about half an hour, you can predict everything he's going to do. Oh. So I'll, I'll set the stage for Wait, it. Wait, but is that just because we did media in school and we like a very nah, aware nah. or is it just obvious? Maybe I just didn't pay attention the first time I watched it because I was like, oh, these are sick robots and the CGI okay. is done really well. Like they've... Right. The movie's good. So it holds up that way. But the way. characters suck. Yeah. Oh. yeah. The, at least the CGI is good. We'll talk about some later that maybe <laughs> fit on that list. <laughs> um, so he's like, so he's down in the dumps, whatever. He buys this one. Oh, no. So, yeah. So he buys all these robots and keeps breaking them. He like always double downs on his bets. And he's like, what if, what if we make it through the first round and you owe me double, like double or nothing? Right. Always does that and then gets his ass kicked every time. And then he gets this call and it's like, hey, you've got a son and his mum's died. And then so. Plot twist. Which, mind you, oh, it's not even a call. Like these people that like, come up to him and say that. Punches one of them in the face, thinking they're trying to come after his money. That's how he, how he rolls. Right. Hunk Jackman is a, a, the puncher, dude. Like, so anyway, his son Anakin Skywalker comes in. <laughs> it, he looks like Anakin Skywalker, and he's a genius, like Anakin Skywalker. He's like, turns out he loves this robot boxing I don't stuff. Know about Anakin Skywalker being a genius. Well, Lil Lil Annie, you know, Lil Pod Racer Annie. Okay. From the first film. Sure. Yeah. It's literally him. Just dropped in. His character was just dropped in the movie. It's not even him. It's just a guy who looks the exact same. Oh, my God. And he's a genius with, like, robots and shit. Anyway, he comes in. Turns out he loves this sport that his dad does. And the dad just couldn't care. Like, he buys... First of all, he sells his son to the son's auntie. They're like, hey, we want to adopt him. And the dad is like... Give me a hundred grand. What? And then so they give him a hundred grand, but he has to take care of him for the summer because they're going to Italy. And the son's like, why couldn't I go to Italy? Finds out his dad does this robot boxing and he's like, all right, maybe I'll hang out with my dad. But he knows he knows that he's been stole, sold. The first thing what he says to his dad was 50 grand. That's it. Like, that's all you got for me? <laughs> so so that. weird. Oh, my goodness. Literally. So, he gets, so just like Annie, he gets sold off as a slave to his father. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> then so his son's a genius and the dad is just like he so they go to their first fight he he spends all that money straight on a robot to f- box and then the son's like you shouldn't fight this robot it's crazy difficult to fight he's like no shut up kid what happens the robot dies and from that point on you can go all right every single time the kid says something the dad's going to disagree with it. And every time it turns out exactly as the kid said, the dad's going to be like, you were right. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. Which in the end doesn't even happen because he ends up saying like, oh, it's a team effort. Yeah, it's me and you. And the kid's like, bro, I came up with that idea. He's like, yeah, team effort. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, I just turned out he's like the worst, most scumbag character. That's a big yikes. Yeah. So yikes. I thought that movie was great. Rewatched it. Characters do not hold up, but CGI holds up. Oh, my goodness. And sucks. The whole thing sucks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that's my bad experience. And so, kicks it off for the main event. Yeah. So I did a few. Um, I did a bit of a research beforehand to find some good ones, and I got thrown back into quite the nostalgia trip. And there's a few mm. of these that I rewatched a couple of years ago, and I would love to now rewatch again just to confirm that they're good or bad. You know? Okay. Okay. So maybe this can be an exercise that we do is looking maybe. at these movies. So the first one is one that is like is bad. It now. is bad. But it's almost like a cult classic. Yeah. So it's Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Ooh. CGI is talk about CGI. Yeah. Bad. It's poopy. It's poopy. Like all the lava is literally orange. Poop. The acting, not great. Not great. Like. Wait, hasn't that got the wolf from Twilight in it? It does. Yeah. Um. What's his name? Um. Taylor Lautner. Edward. Edward's the other one. No. 
Team it's Taylor Lautner. Oh, yeah. That guy. Yeah, because he dated Taylor Swift and it was Taylor and Taylor. Anyways, Tay-tay. that's how I know <laughs> that his name. <laughs> so it's got a young him in it and he's doing the most. He's doing flips and doing his singing and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, and like the plot is just like... It's just weird. It's just I don't bad. know. I don't know. It's not bad. It's got a really good premise of him like going into like a dream world and all the characters are based on characters in his real life. Yeah. And all this kind of stuff. And he has to like save the world by saving the dream world kind of thing and all this kind of stuff. Um it also has like young um Yeah, who's the girl? Isn't she someone quite significant as well? The the ice queen, the ice princess girl. She is, oh my God, I can't remember her first name. It's, she plays Allison in Pretty Little Liars. Oh, right. Um, so something I Yeah, wouldn't. so, <laughs> but yeah, but it's not, it's not terrible, but it's definitely not it's, like. I mean, it's a kid's movie. The film doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up whatsoever. It's like how the first Harry Potter CGI does yeah, not hold cause up. Because was that by the same guys who did Spy Kids? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, but Spy know. Kids three is just. But Spy Kids three has the exact same CGI. Yeah, it's got that guy from the Marvel movie, the Eggman, from Spy Kids three is the guy from Ant Man. They're just the same character. Okay, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sorry. just a meme that went around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you I was went like, up who? To the meme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think I don't know if they were by the same people, but like they're very similar, bad CGI style. Yeah. So, yep. um, that's a bad. That's a bad. I've that got is a good, bad. and I'd love to talk to you about it. Do you want to do your good, and then I'll see if I can relive my bad? I've got five movies. Mine's, one of mine's a hot about. take, so you... Oh, yeah, you go go ahead. Okay, so... Take the um, floor. A good... Don't take the floor. We need that it. That is arguably funnier as an adult than as a kid. Okay. The Cat in the Hat. Cat in the Hat. I knew you were going to say it. It is. I knew you were going to so say it. I was going to say that as well. Funnier. It is so much Cat funnier as an adult I think than as talk- a kid. I think we mentioned it a few episodes ago that Cat in the Hat it's is so good. still a banger. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think some people would disagree with that. but I think I, me and my friend for a really long time only communicated in like screen grabs from Cat in the Hat with the quote, like with the lines oh, nice. in it yep. for months in high school. <laughs> like it is so good. The The comedy that he does as the Cat in the Hat is just top tier stupid funny. It's very meme. Like I think that's why because it's, it's aged with yeah. it's aged with kids going into meme culture. Right. Cat in the Hat was made for meme culture pre-meme. Yeah. Wars. And it's also like it's Pre just so wars. whimsical. Yeah. It brings in characters that we grew up reading about, with like the Cat in the Hat and like Doctor Seuss and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And you can tell that there was such a switch between like, I think we did we talk about this. We we talked the Grinch about it. and and then yeah, and yeah. then the Cat in the Hat and then the switch to like the Lorax and stuff where they went animated because they were like, nope, can't do those live actions anymore. The part we talked about though was in like episode one or two. We talked about. From movies that go that come from books, and we're like, how did they make an hour and a half movie out of a twelve-page book? Yeah, like technically, it's a bad depiction of the book because the book doesn't have any of that shit in it. Like him getting a jar, like getting fired or whatever. That whole scene, you're fired, fired, (laughs) that stuff. Like that's not in the book, obviously. So it's a bad adaptation. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, just the just the drastic change of like the live and action Jim Carrey Grinch. Yeah. And then the live action Cat in the Hat, to then go to the animated Horton Hears a Who, mm. and the Lorax and all that kind of stuff, and it's very much more kid movie than family movie. Yeah. Yep. And I think we've seen that big change in the last. I'd hate I'd hate to say it, but like twenty years, like twenty years, it'd be like fifteen yeah. years. Because yeah. when we were kids, between this is aging ourselves, but from when, when, we, were when we were kids, <laughs> like under what, like twelve and under, so like what's that, two thousand and eleven? Yeah, yeah. Pre like movies pre two thousand eleven were family films because mm. they wanted the whole family to be able to go out to the movies and enjoy the movie. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And then Real Steel came out and it was like, oh, 
<laughs> <Let's>, but the <laughs> it's <intro> the boys. <laughs> Stop it. But the introduction to streaming services and at home movies and all that kind of stuff coming in and becoming more popular, they didn't need to do it for the whole family anymore. No. They could just make a kids' movie for kids where the parents could put it on and then leave. They didn't have just to go. sit in the cinema with yeah. them. You know, like, because back in the day, you had to. If you wanted to watch a movie, unless you bought it on DVD months after it came out in cinemas, because there was none of this director streaming up on Netflix the day it comes out kind of situation. Yeah. It was either you seen it in the movies or you waited three months for its DVD release and then you had to convince your parent to spend $20 on the movie. Mm, what a weird process. Right? Yeah. You think about that? Like, oh my <laughs> goodness. Or you could convince them as a new release – to get your yeah. parents to spend the money, the extra money at Video Easy to get a new release instead of the weekly movies that were like a dollar. Mm. To spend the extra, the $8 or whatever it was to get a new release. And my mum only did it when we had a coupon <laughs> for or, a new release. And then we got lucky later in the years where it was like, if you had a plug-in hard drive, like a powered hard drive that was like a terabyte, there were like a thousand bucks, plug in your terabyte to the wall. Yeah. Plug it into the TV and then, or plug it into the computer and then burn movies onto discs. Yep. Yeah. So there, were, I, th I feel like in every family back in, you know, 2006 to 2012. What, there was a pirate? There was one family member that knew how to do it. That knew and how to have bootleg. To do it <laughs> yeah, and yeah. would have to do it for the whole family. Yeah, yeah. Like you would put in requests. Uh. You'd give them a list and be like, hey, can you see... I strictly remember we had a folder of mm. burnt movies. My mum probably still has them somewhere in her house. Of just burnt. And they're written on with yeah. a texter. And one of my favourite ones from that was Aquila and the Bee. Okay. It's about a little girl doing a spelling bee. Nice. Aquila. And it was so good. It had Kiki Palmer in it when she was a little girl. Okay. Holds up. Nice. It's so That's good. That's still a good film. That's one to add to the list. It's so good. That's not even okay. on my list. I just thought about when we were talking about burnt movies. Akila B. Akila and the B. Her name is Akila. Oh, Akila. Akila and Akila the and, and the, the B. B. Akila yeah. and the B. Yeah. That sounds like a horror film. Yeah. Do you have one? I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one, honestly, I couldn't remember it too much because I didn't actually go that ham. But it's gonna be a hot take. Live action Scooby Doo. Last time <gasps> I watched. That's on my list. Last time I watched it, Stop it sucked. <laughs> it sucked. I'm telling you. That is on my list. The character. A good. <laughs> no nah, hot take. It's not Stop that good. It. All right. So the so the acting, the comedy, and like the story, it's great. The casting, hundred percent. The casting's good. The casting is would not change iconic. Thing. Yes, it's iconic. Any um, other casting of Scooby Doo is wrong. The plane scenes and that, like Scooby is an I don't like how Scooby's animated really well, but everything else is. It's like they spent CGI. all the budget on Scooby. Yeah, they because they had to because he's in like ninety percent of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's all the comedic relief in that, but everything else. There's even scenes with like Scooby and then something else happening. The something else, like the ghosts and stuff, will be bad CGI, and right. then Scooby is like really good. So I haven't watched so it in a little bit. I'm looking at it from a production point. Right. Bad film. You can also see that all of the food is fake. Yeah. It's all plastic. <laughs> you can see. Like you can tell. Especially the scene with like Scooby and Shaggy in like the kitchen scene with all the sausages and stuff. Yeah. All fake. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. Bad production. There's also no realism. some things though. No realism like, in this kid's movie. <laughs> What's well, a live action though? Like you'd think yeah. there'd be a level of it. But um Another thing that I just remember with that is... Wait, I love how we're talking about the food not looking realistic in a movie about a dog and a gang of detectives go to an island that's haunted. To try and but the figure sausages out what's aren't real. wrong. But the sausages are the thing that aren't real. And the, but the final island, the spooky villain, island. <laughs> the final villain, spoilers, is a little dog version of Scooby. Yeah, <laughs> I like how we're talking about the sausages not being real. When, and their But no, the rest of it checks out. <laughs> um, I also like the like the kids' humor or the adult humor that gets put in. Like when they at the very start of the film, mm. they zoom into like a van with smoke coming out oh, the top of the yeah, van. Yeah. But then they go into the van and they're cooking. Yeah, you know? yeah, that is pretty like, good. Like the very subtle, like and aren't they listening stuff? to like reggae or something yeah. like that? Yeah, something yeah. like that. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I just think it's very, very subtle, perfectly nuanced kind of. It is good. Yeah. Because they're, they're hippies. List. Yeah. That's good. That is a good one. So I feel like I agree on you with the whole like CGI. They did very, very much focus on Scooby. I think the the plot is all right. Like it holds up enough, especially when you watch other Scooby-Doo episodes yeah. and things like that. And I just think nothing can get past that casting. I suppose, honestly, it's uh, going, looking back on it, it probably got ruined because we did media. Yes. That's one of their movies that's got ruined because now, now that I've grown up, Oh, as I'm a kid, as a kid, I'm like looking at just the story, the funny, goofy shit that yeah. Scooby does, and then you grow up, and it's like, oh, now I'm looking at like the production value and the way the CGI the is, is. And, <laughs> yeah, the, how yeah, about yeah. it? That's the the you're a sucker for that one. Oh, that's a bad green screen. <laughs> She's always saying <laughs> that. When the lighting doesn't match. The yeah. Scene. Oh, or that you're is good. My you're big good with continuity with like hair and stuff in yeah. a conversation. In Peaky Blinders, there was a couple scenes where. <laughs> There'd be like hats going this way, and then it faces. So it's facing like the left side, and then it faces like the right side or something. Um, even you'd always in, pick those out. Even in your new favorite TV show of tires, I found a continuity error. With, tires, yeah. With um, the with fact Will, that, the fact that Will is not meant to be currently working at the shop, but then his hands are in a cut scene. Yeah. Of him because you can see his hands from a mile away. You can tell that it's his hands, and you didn't catch it. And I, was I didn't like, catch it. No. I was like, "That's Will's hands," and you're like, "Hang on, what?" And you had to rewind it and watch it again to catch it. What well, comes up for like half a second? And you're like, that's not meant to be in that. I was like, what the hell? I didn't even see the half a second of Will's hand grabbing a piece of paper it's so when good. they just talked about he got fired. <laughs> like, spoiler. Oh, spoilers. spoilers. If you haven't seen it by tires. now, you should have already seen it twice. Dude, it's so good. But yeah, like I'm, I think year like, you know, because we did meter in year 10, year 11 and year 12. Yeah. We did it all three. So we had three years of picking apart films and learning about the film industry and learning about how films are made and all that kind of stuff and making our own and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think it's genuinely ruined the movie experience for me. For, when we watch yeah. movies, you can't turn off that part of your brain that analyzes that's, it. Yeah, that's trying to work out how they made it, how yeah. did they do this. So you can be thoroughly engrossed in a movie and then they do one thing that takes you out of it because they're like, it's a bad cut scene or it's a bad... Mm. green screen or whatever and you can be like oh my god why did they do that yeah so i think honestly the cut scenes and stuff like that continuity is such a big thing i can see it anywhere same with like how lighting doesn't work or like whatever but i think that's also why we enjoy watching movie commentary things on youtube like i love watching mm. dylan is in trouble trin lovell all that kind of stuff and like um your intimate your internet mum ash She's great. They do like movie commentaries on is that movies into your and channel? series. <laughs> no, this is That's just another girl who's named mom. Ash. It worked out yeah, really right. well. Okay. Um, and I love looking at things and watching them commentate on movies that I've also watched. So I can be like, oh my God, I picked up on that too. Mm. Oh, oh my God, I didn't pick up on that. How crazy, you know? And it's just that community is so crazy. It is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they like the like history buff ones. There's a history yeah, boss channel that right. does it of like, uh, like war films or whatever. Yeah. Things that they got wrong, things that they got yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I've watched a couple of, especially on costuming as well. Like, costuming, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I know one of the most popular ones is The New Little Women that came out in like 2019. Okay. They, um, the costuming for that was not accurate Wasn't for the accurate. time period at all. Okay. But yeah, not going too much into that. that <laughs> That's a whole episode. other episode, literally. Yeah, just um, his, yeah. historical bluffs on. Do you have another? I have two more then, seeing as you had Scooby Doo as well. I've got one, um, but I don't actually remember it that much because I barely watched it as a kid. Okay. And I remember watching it with you a few years ago. Okay. But it wasn't until we watched. Oh, it was when I'm talking a few years ago, I'm talking like. 2016? Yeah. Like, like when we were like 17? Literally, yeah, yeah. Okay. But re-watching it again, I was like, I've definitely seen it, but I couldn't even remember it as a kid. But right. Cats and Dogs. <gasps> yes. With the cats and the dogs and they've got the weird and faces that talk. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It sucked. It like it went into like Uncanny Valley kind of yeah. situation. It was two, But it was 2001, so I guess production-wise I can be like, hey, that actually looks pretty good for 2001 to make the dogs and stuff look like they're talking. I but... actually think I had... That on VHS. 
Yeah. We definitely watched it at your place. But anyway, we I must don't know. have found it on a streaming service and went, oh my God, and like wanted to live yeah. nostalgically for it a little bit. It turns out I'm not the only one. Like, I had to look up the movie, and then the first thing that came up was like a Reddit post that said, Remember that cats? And, remember that stupid movie about cats and dogs? I think it's called Cats and Dogs. It sucked. Like that was the Reddit oh post. My goodness. So it turns out I'm not alone. So that's, well, that's why good. I added it to my list. That's the only reason. I was like, I remember that movie being There's crap. There's so many of those that you completely yeah. forget about. But when you see something written about it or whatever, it just all is in your brain again. Yeah. But I wrote in like dog spy hotel movie, and it came up with that post. So oh my goodness. I don't know. Was it? Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. So my next good. Is The Emperor's New Groove. Oh, yeah, yeah. Such a good animated movie. Yeah. But also, like, the story's great. The shenanigans are great. The breaking the fourth wall where he, like, pauses it to, like, show the map and, like, draw it. Yeah, that's so true. The innovation with the fact that the way it depicted a kid's movie was great. It also had, um, I don't know, like, there was a few key actors and actresses that... In this 2000 to 2010 period, we're all over every movie. Mm. Every movie. Like they were <laughs> everywhere. And one of them was Patrick Warburton. So you may not recognize his name, but he was, he was Kronk oh, okay. in Emperor's New Groove. He was Ken, which was the human in the B movie. And he was also tying in perfectly, as I said, he was everywhere. To my final movie. What's your final movie? My final movie. He was in Hoodwinked. Oh, my gosh. So, he was the wolf in Hoodwinked. He was Wolf W. Wolf. Was Dude, the wolf's name. one of the guys from work who's also named JD. But we I have been talking about this all week. Really? Yeah, they watched it this week and we were I talking about it. I loved Hoodwinked as a kid. Yeah. The animation was not great. It was like, it reminded me of like what you would get on like... You know when KFC did those movie discs, like the yeah. short movies as the like kids meal prize? Yeah. That's the quality that it reminds me of. It is so good. Dude, so, Hoodwinked does slap. So Hoodwinked is like a play on a lot of classic fairy tale situations like Little Red Riding Hood and stuff like that. Um, and it, the, I actually got up the synopsis because it's so funny. I love it. So it says, sorry, I'm just going to get to it. Um, Okay, so it says, the candy recipes of the goodie shops have been stolen by the goodie bandit and many animals are out of business. While the police are chasing the criminal, there is a mess at Granny's house involving Little Red Riding Hood, the wolf, the woodsman and Granny disturbing the peace in the forest. They are all arrested by the impatient Chief Grizzly Detective Nikki Flipper is in charge of the investigation and each accused gives his or her version of the incident and Flipper uses the information to disclose the identity of the evil goody bandit. This is such a clever way to use such classic characters in a classic story but rewind it into a way that makes sense because yeah. another recent series that has just used these, this exact storylining is the only murders in the building? I don't know what that is. So the only murders in the building is like they meant they're doing. Is that the Netflix series? Yeah, yeah. So it has Selena Gomez and um, what's his? The two older guys in it, the one who played Jack Frost in Santa Claus Three. That guy. And then the Jack Frost and um, yeah, yeah. So someone else, Stephen something and Stephen something. Um, okay, Stephen and Stephen. <laughs> Stephen and Stephen. Stephen and Stephen attorneys Steve at law. Steve Martin and. Steve Martin and someone else. I'll think of it. But they also use, so they have the guys with like this podcast and they're unveiling this mystery as it happens. And like it splits between their three perspectives till you get the whole story. Right. The thing that's also awesome is the cast of this movie. I don't know whether you've ever actually looked up the cast of this movie. For Hoodwinked. For Hoodwinked. No. Okay. So Anne Hathaway is Red Riding Hood. Oh, cool. Glenn Close is the granny. Right. Anthony Anderson is Detective Bill Stork, who is the guy from Kangaroo Jack. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know the guy? Yeah, yeah. Tom Kenny is Tommy, and he is the voice of SpongeBob. Oh, cool. He is in it. I was like, who the hell is that? Uh-huh. Exhibit, 
place yeah, chief. Yeah, he's Grizzly. the chief. I did know that. He's the chief. Yep. Ken Marino is, um, you know, in Brooklyn Nine Nine, that like the captain that has no idea what's going on, like J- Jason, that they like. He's in a couple of scenes. Vaguely remember he's in it, a couple yeah. of scenes. You would know his face as if I showed yeah. you straight away. He is in it. Um, and then my favorite is my favorite character is the yodeling goat. Yeah, yeah. Japheth. His name is Japheth. Apparently. I didn't know he had a name. So but. it's Japheth the goat. Um, and apparently, fun fact that I just read on their IMDb page is that in um, in production, the producer showed like little kids some concepts for the movie and like watched the ins- expressions on their faces, kind of like a what's it called when they like a round just like a test audience, a test something. audience, yeah, yeah. Um, and they really liked the character of Jappa the goat, and they decided not to delete him because they were originally going to delete the character Aww. of the yodeling goat. Um, and then also, there's a few great quotes. Um, the wolf like gets handed a lit stick of dynamite and goes, "What candles are those?" And then the little twitchy squirrel that drinks too much caffeine points at the writing on the dynamite and goes, "Dinamite must be Italian." <laughs> it's <laughs> just so good. So we we talked about this at work a lot. Um, because funny enough. The friend JD had a renaissance on this movie with his missus and he let me know that the whole of Hoodwinked in HD, like probably more HD than what you had on DVD somehow, is on YouTube. Yeah, the whole movie. Dude, the whole movie is just free. Yep, on YouTube. I had to double check. I was like, is that real? Yeah. That's so funny you brought that up because like, and they brought it on DVD this week. I so, not. They got so it on DVD. This is the thing. So it must be going around. I watched it when I was a kid. I was obsessed with it. I yeah. found that YouTube a couple of years back, watched the whole thing on YouTube. Yeah. And I was just, it just brought me back. I, it's such a vivid child memory of yeah. my brain. And it's just so good. I like that it's a movie that's done in the most basic of ways. Like, I think because it was probably the start of like Universal's animation. Yeah. Stuff well, like 3D. Especially because it came out in 2005. Yeah. So. Or well, when you think t- to like. Let's know, Disney a, already had how much are there. Yeah. Like let's have a look at like what other. I don't know. It's like, it's it, it's good. Like story wise it definitely holds up really well. And it was hilarious as a kid and I'm sure it's still hilarious now. Okay. But yeah. It's a good one. Let's go. I'm going to have a bit of a look up. You keep talking. I'll keep talking. Um, I'm well I didn't look. actually. I didn't actually have any movies but. That is very funny. That Hoodwink must be going. It must be going around. Okay, so in two thousand and five, yeah, animated releases are Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were Rabbit. Oh, that's a good movie. one. That's a good one. Hoodwinked. Well, who knows? That one might not hold up. Yeah, true. Chicken Little, another movie by the same company. Chicken Little was good. They same same company. Same company. Same style. All right, now looking at the quality of Chicken Little. Compared to Hoodwinked. Hoodwink is basic AF compared to Chicken Little. I think it's the same company. Surely not. Surely, like... Because did you... Was. was it Universal that did Hoodwinked? Or am I getting it wrong, too? Oh, I don't know. But also, other movies, Barbie Fairytopia, great movie. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Robots came out the same movie. Can you remember Robots? Robots? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robots. I do remember so robots. Good. Yeah, yeah. Corpse Bride came out. Classic. Corpse Bride, that was Corpse good. Bride. Bratz Rock Angels. One of my favorites. Don't remember that. You wouldn't. It was Bratz. I was obsessed with Bratz. <laughs> I had all of the hey, Bratz movies. I was obsessed movies. with Bratz, but I had all of the Bratz movies pirated onto DVDs as a birthday gift to me. Um, and I also had a Bratz P- PlayStation. Yeah. Um, and it was absolutely iconic. Madagascar was also released that year. I might be able to turn around on um, Hoodwinked and say, because all those other movies, they've got like a good style to them and stuff. I just remember like the Lumberjack, developed. all the animation, all the walking and stuff was a bit like... Dr- 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 dr. Yeah. In my head, like as we're going through it, I'm thinking like uh, 2005, it can probably let go of some of that. great. But... 
But now that you're mentioning these other movies, like Chicken Little and that had all the dance moves and they were like real fluid. Madagascar. But then, yeah, Madagascar. Madagascar is the same year. Same year. What? No, they're not. Yeah. Like Hoodwinked. 2005, animated movies. Hoodwinked Madagascar. almost l- looks like a, yeah, 1998. But the thing is, I'm pretty sure Madagascar was a computer animated. And then... Well, so is Hoodwink. Oh, yeah, Hoodwink is too. Yeah. Um, Wallace and Gromit might not. Might Wallace and Gromit was stop motion. Yeah. Same with, um, I'm pretty sure The Corpse Bride is, I'm not sure whether it's, I'm pretty sure it's corp, uh, stop motion as well. Yeah. Because it's. Um, is it Tim Burton? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, robots, great movie. Yeah, Robots Absolutely as well. Absolutely great movie. Like Robots, Robots and Hoodwinked for like pure art style and animation. And like character animation are in two different freaking decades. Um, also, the Academy. But they're the, released on the same year. The 2005 Academy Award for Best Animated Feature was The Incredibles for 2005. Yeah, dude. Like, well, Incredibles, funny enough. So it probably wouldn't have been released in 2005, but it would have released the year before, which yeah. is insane. Mm. Yeah, no, Incredibles is good as well. That's a great story, Incredibles. And Winnie the Pooh's Heffalump movie. Did you ever watch that? Can't remember it. Oh my goodness! It was so cute. It was about a little heifer lump. Oh, <laughs> that so is cute. cute. We had that. Yep. So robots, yep. valiant with the birds, like the bird army. Yeah, Ro- dude, robots. I got to watch that again because I used to play the video game of it, and it was. It probably still holds up today. And <laughs> Hoodwinked also came out the last of two thousand. The last of them. So that doesn't the make any sense to me. I know, right? Like, because unless that's like, who says that's the art? Oh, the art style I'm going for is. Bland, no shadows, low <laughs> textures, hoodwinked 2005. Uh, when you could go, I'm going to go fantastic fluid robot motions from the movie Robots. Yeah. I don't know. Just real, real odd. Right? Yeah. So that's very interesting. When you, like, when you look at it on its own, it holds up. Definitely. When you, go, when you get past how basic the animation style is, I think the plot and the characters and all that make up for the animation style oh, for and sure. like the animation quality. But then you put it against what else came out in 2005 and even more, 2004, like the Incredibles mm. and all that kind of thing. It's You sit there and you go, what? Like, do you have a quarter of the budget? Like, what is going yeah, on? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it like, could have been anything like that. End of the day, the story is really funny and, yeah, that goat, I thank God they kept it in. Otherwise, it... It would have gone know, from right? a forty percent on Rotten Tomatoes to like a twenty. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. All um, right. But yeah, it just like looking back through movies that got released in two thousand three, two thousand four, two thousand five, is unlocking so many more movies in my brain, and my nostalgia hit is like peaking right now. Yeah. Because I remember going into Video Easy on a Friday, and Mum had her coupons for home releases. And we would go and pick out and we'd have to choose, do we want two new releases or do we want seven weekly movies Yeah, that had been yep. out for a while? And I'm one of three. So it was either we could decide two mm. movies, new releases to watch as a whole family or we get a two movies each and then mum gets to pick one Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Like it was literally – and almost every time it was – Weekly movies because we wanted to have two. Weekly, yeah, yeah. And then my brother would always use one for a PlayStation 1 game. Oh, nice. He yeah. would use one of his weeklies. But then also I remember like going, getting home from school and having having to go past Video Easy to drop in the movies back yeah. so that we didn't get fined. Nice. For not returning the movies, you know. Yeah, I don't know how often we did, did that. We definitely did it a little bit, but... You guys were more Magnum movies. We, yeah, we were right? Magnum movies and... I was terrified of Magnum movies because there was this like scream poster it for the movie screen. It was purple in there. Huh? No, it wasn't like yellow. Magnum movies was yellow and purple though, right? I think so. Maybe. Video is it was orange. I think we went to Magnum movies because, and we also like won a prize from them. Won like an Xbox and that. Oh, really? That was really cool. Yeah. We won like a Matrix Xbox. That's so cool. And it was see-through green with like Matrix game and Dude, all this. So I still cool. play the game on my computer. Path of Neo. It's wow. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Really cool. No, I just remember going into Video Easy. It was right next to the train station. You'd get in your PJs with your little Ugg yeah. slippers and you'd go in. And I remember one of my cousins' cousins, so like 
my cousin's extended families, like yeah, she worked there at like sixteen, and yeah. we used to go in there, and you would know exactly who it is, and yeah, like right. we're still close to that family purely because we would see them. That's pretty cool. Every week, but they're yeah. like they're like my auntie's like in laws. Yeah. Like her sister in law's family. Yeah, yeah. So it's very convoluted, but that's it's pretty cool. Such a Movies tangible memory. Together. Whereas, like, kids these days are just on the TV. With my Netflix. No, yeah, no, no, no. On the kids don't say it like that, but you know. Complaining kids about. Kids get like, up and go watch Netflix outside. Yeah. <laughs> like, not to be one of those of like, oh, my kids these days, but they just wouldn't understand the excitement of having a sleepover and convincing your mum to go to in. Go on. To rent. video easy and rent some films, but also on the very odd occasion that you convince them to buy the stupidly overpriced fairy floss at the movie. Yeah, bruh. Damn. Like, I don't know. That's, that's deadly. Such a, it's such a deep cut. That was a, that's like a, feels like a heist on your parents. Yeah. Like, mom, buy the $10 fairy floss. Or like the popcorn and they'd be like, no, we have popcorn. She's like, no, we spent $10 on movies. We're not going to spend another $10 on Yeah. Popcorn. <laughs> Cause like and like the move the popcorn was there was like yeah. overpriced and they'd be like no I went to yeah. Coles earlier this week and we bought and got popcorn some microwavable yeah yeah microwavable when we get home damn we got some microwavable in there I might make up some microwavable and watch Hoodwinked I think can we actually watch Hoodwinked <laughs> I would a hundred percent coming up next episode our full review of a Hoodwinked full review of Hoodwinked yeah how are we feeling we're at uh, an hour and two minutes yeah I think we're ready to I think we're ready to pop out. All right. Uh, I think this has been a really great chat. I would love to talk movies. I could talk movies. We're definitely going to talk movies more. That's the thing. Like, so if you have any specific movies you want us to check out and like talk about on the pod, anything like that, please let us know. Like, send us a message, put it in the comments, anything like that. Yeah. We really want to know because otherwise we'll just come up with stuff, which is fine. And coming up next week, our full review of (laughs) Hoodwinked. No. But yeah. But that's been uh, that. And. Just letting everyone know, we are now on Spotify, YouTube, and YouTube podcasts. I guess they're going to have YouTube podcasts. we got a podcast channel on our channel. Pod- oh, oh yeah, no. yeah. And we've also... Google like, Podcasts is gone. It's now just gone to YouTube. That's yeah. all I'm trying to say. So, and also we've, we're going to be weekly episodes. So, it's not going to be... Mm. It's not going to be like we just did a big lump sum at the very start. So, there was enough for you guys to listen to. So, you weren't listening to just one episode yeah. and having to wait. So, um, yeah, now they'll be week to week. So, if you do have suggestions and stuff, please let us know because we will have time before we record the next pod to put that in. Yeah. So and I also want to do some little exclusive videos. Yeah. So, whether you want to make some as well, but where, where it's just one of us yeah, talking yeah. about something that we really like. Like, uh, I don't know, I'm going to set up in there and probably Books, do talk theater, Isle of Man now that it's finished. Man. Yeah, sure. Um, that sounds great. Yeah, you know, history of things, whatever. We're just going to do some fun stuff. Hopefully people yeah. like it. Anyway, yeah. we hope you enjoyed. Right. And that's us. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.